Oh snap, Blaze is going live. Hey, how you doing? 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 Like I say, just in case you're joining me for the very first time, I'm your host, the one they call Brian Glaze Gibbs. Listen right now, if you want to know any more about me, Google. Google me. Like I said, I was once the problem. Now what I'm trying to do is I seek to be part of the solution. How do I right my wrong? How do I stop these young knucklehead kids from making that wrong decision? How do you get them to stop playing Grand Theft Auto with their own life, man? There's no reset but the hit when you go out there in the street. When you jump off that porch and you decide to go all the way, there's no reset but the hit. Hey, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about that interview. I'm gonna talk about the interview between Hashan Campbell and Troy Reed. I, you know what, I have to say hats off. I think that was a heck of an interview. Um, I watched it last night. And right now, when you watch it and you see how, like I said right now, how Sean, you know, conduct himself. And right now is the line of question that he was asking Troy in regards to his relationship with Alpo. Here it is right now. Here come the book right here. Okay. I never met Alpo. Albert served 24 years in prison. But Alpo killed them in six years. I thought about that interview. I thought that interview was real, real deep. Why I thought it was real, real deep? Because once again, the line of question, like some of the things that, you know what, Hashan took the time and he asked Troy. And Troy broke it down. And what he was saying is this, like with Albert, Alberto. It's like Alpo had two personality. And what I mean by that is this. Here it is when he was in. He was this remorseful gentle individual and right now is he was albert but then again like you say he put that post stuff behind you how can you really do that don't get me wrong it all depends upon the environment like yeah when you're incarcerated you got more time to think you think about all your wrongdoing and all the things that went wrong in your life and what you should or what you could have done differently because in one of the conversations i heard him say that right now is when he went to this program Every summer, he went to this program, upstate New York. And right now, if he had stayed in that program, he would have been a better individual. Probably he could fulfill his dream of being a fireman. So when you sit back and you think about that, that's deep. But folks, people don't understand that. A lot of times, you can be a product of your environment. Because when you're at peace, and you're in a peaceful state, in a peaceful, like I'm saying, place, guess what? You can be that person. He was Albert, okay? But once he got back to society, okay? Uh, once he came around NYC, New York City, the metropolitan area, the five boroughs, he became Alpo. And I can identify with that because once again, it's like when I'm not in New York, I'm good. But as soon as I get off that plane, as soon as I get back in New York City, guess what happened? Automatic my lawn, my, my whole thing changed. Despite you have a, 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 a something that was buried inside of you. But once it's in you, it's in you. As soon as I get back to New York City and I get back into the metropolitan area, guess what? I'm back to who I once was. Despite I change, my lawn go off. I'm watching, I'm looking, I'm on point. So that's the same thing with Alpo. As soon as he got back to what? New York City. Because as he say, Troy stated when they was in Maine, Albert Abraham was a different person. He was more relaxed, more calm, more like, you know, at peace. But as soon as he got back to the tri-state, the metropolitan area, that Brooklyn, Manhattan, Bronx, Queens, Staten Island, guess what? Alpo come all out all over again. And like I told you folks, like getting back to that interview or whatever, when you sit back and you look at it and you watch the time that Troy spent, you know what I'm saying, going to visit Alpo, I thought that was deep. Because a lot of times people don't come see you. When you were in jail, nobody, they, they don't give a damn about you. But as he say, he wanted to understand. Like he wanted to get to know and do a documentary on Albert, on Alpo. Like, you know, you hear all this stuff as far as they made a movie, paid in full, speaking about Alpo, Rich Porter, AZ, that's deep. And you look at it and people do not understand how, you know, they made a movie about them. And some of the stuff in the movie is true. And as they say, a lot of that stuff is false. 
But once again, people want to know, people want to understand, people want more of it. And right now, as he's saying, and either Hashan talking about right now was like, you know, um, they asked a question about he heard that Alpo had caught two bodies while he was out and was on a run. And like Troy said, that was not true. And you see how rumors start. People start rumor every damn day. Right now, it's like, you know, you think that man did 24 years that he's going to get back out and commit murder? You know what? Don't get me wrong. If his life against the line, like, for example, during that night, October 31st, 2021, that morning, right now, don't get me wrong. If he knew that young man was coming to kill him and he's right, guess what? It's either you or them, but you're going to defend yourself. But just to go around this murdering people again, nah. And once again, what he say, those 14 people that he was once responsible for, it was like being a part of the game. Like even when he talked about the relationship with him and Rick, you know what I'm saying, Rich Porter. And as he stated, that was his friend. Yeah, he met him through AZ. He knew him three years, but he felt that being partners, being in that drug game, somebody, he, he felt Rich beat him. Okay, so once again, like I say, he felt that was part of the game. If you crossed me, and whatever I do in that time frame, guess what? That's part of the game. Everything is part of the game. And folks, right now, when it comes to playing that game, there's no real rules and regulations in playing the game. Right now, you play to win. Like you say right now, was as he say, you know, according to Troy Reed, as he say, Albert, Alpo, watch people that taught him the game. But yet, in still regards what it was rules and regulation. But then again, they wasn't following the rules and regulation. They was changing the rules to benefit them. They was changing the rules to enhance. Okay, cool. Well, I don't supposed to do this, but guess what? Later for that, I'm gonna do it, but nobody else can. Right now, guess what, folks? When you're in that street, it's no rules and regulation. Everybody in that street to win. So you're gonna win by any means necessary. So once again, like I told you, the first thing what I'm saying is right now, check that book out. I read it. I'm about to do a review on it. I never met Alpo. I think Troy Reed did a hell of a hell of a job. I think Hashan did a hell of a hell of a job with the interview. And folks, if you haven't checked it out, I'm going to share the link. And I, I, I thought right now, like I say right now, for Hashan Campbell, you know, just getting into that lane a couple years ago. You know what? Like I say, is Hashan Campbell the Walter Conkrack? Is he the Walter Conkrack of the YouTube? Come on. Because once again, like he created a lane. And look what he's doing. Doing a powerful hell of a job. And thing right now, shout out to Troy Reed. I never even heard of Troy Reed. You know, until somebody about this documentary that was trying to do on me was speaking about, he learned from Troy. You know, so shout out to Troy Reed. And like I say, folks, listen, man, all the young boys, young girls out there, man, you know what? Be true to yourself. Don't be a people pleaser, man. Take heed. When you watch or you listen to these interviews and these stories, take heed to that. Why? Because it's a message. If you don't get the message, guess what? You're going to lose. And to me, we as human beings, stop trying to impress people. Stop trying to be people pleaser. Because once again, those that love you, they're going to love you for you. Those that don't, it's not going to love you. But we too busy trying to please other people for the wrong reason. Listen, hit the like button. Subscribe, share. You know what I'm saying? Get your signed copy of the Beyond Lucky Book. The Brian Grace Gift Story. A true story of practical money, murder, redemption. By emailing me. Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Gibbs, G-I-B-B-S, 1201 at yahoo.com. Also, like I said right now, is to know more about my story, Google me. Hey, peace, love, and prosperity. One love. On Broadway. Good day, good day, good day, good day. Thank you for joining me. Just in case you are joining me for the very first time, I am your host, the one they call BGG. The BGG movement is in full effect, folks. Listen, look at this, man. You talk about beautiful. I want to sing that song. You are so beautiful to me. Can't you see you everything? <laughs> good day, good day, good day, good day, good day, everybody. How y'all doing right now? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Like I said right now, folks, listen, it's a saying that you can always go back home. I don't say that you need to go back home, but you always can go back home. It's not where you're from, it's where you're at. A lot of times right now, there's a lot of life lesson that was learned 
and these PJs. And to me, like I said, I got the best of both worlds. Why? Because I grew up, born and raised in Bedford Stuyvesant, then went to Cyprus, man, Cyprus. But years ago, you would never catch me on an elevator. Elevator for what? What the hell are you doing on an elevator? The elevator to us back then was like the death trap. Why? Because once again, man, that's where you can get caught up at. You can get caught right at that damn elevator. You know, while you're waiting to get in the elevator, waiting to come off the elevator, that sucker was a death trap. But guess what, folks? Listen, here it is, Cypress Hill, folks. Look at it. Look at it. Look at me now. Look at me now. Where I'm at? The project, the PJ. Always can go back home, folks. Always can go back home, man. And like I said right now, is but once again, I want to come back here. You know what I want to do? I want to get back. I want to start a program. You know what? Start feeding the homeless. Besides start feeding the homeless, start feeding those that, you know what I'm saying, hungry. You know what? Start supplying, like, you know, back to school supply. Okay? How do we do that? How do we get back to the community or whatever? Because once again, you know, start building that BGG movement. It's best to give than receive. So to me, this is my community. This is where I came from. So my objective is how do I get back, get down and dirty, and be more involved? <coughs> be more involved man <coughs> it must be the pollen in the air it must be the pollen in the air but that's what it's all about folks though. <coughs> how do i get back you know what that's my objective how do i get back involved in my community you know <coughs> hey look at it. pj pj they're building up they're building up they're building up they're building up. They're building up all around us, man. They're building up. They're building up. They're building up. Yeah. But like I say, you know, being that they're building up, I want to be a part of it. How do I get back, man? How do I right my wrong? How do I help my community? How do I help these kids to stop picking up the brick, throwing it to prison war for absolutely nothing? Peace, love, and prosperity.